In this video, we're going to talk about the various system conditions that can cause equal pressures. This video is brought to you by Yellow Jacket. Now, when I talk about system conditions, let's, let's include the technician in that as well. So system conditions that cause equal refrigerant pressures can be various. There's a lot of different things that can cause that situation from the, oops, my fault, to, oh no, the compressor's dead. So when the compressor gets overloaded, sometimes it will cause that sort of condition. Uh, scrolls will separate on scroll compressors. They can cause what looks like an inefficient compressor. And let's, let's call it that, inefficient compressor. It may not be equal pressures on all these things I'm going to talk about, but it might be pretty close, you know. That may be just system conditions. The compressor might be okay. The compressor might have failed and be just doing no work at all. And that happens, you know, that's not uncommon for that to happen. Here's my favorite one. My favorite one, which sadly occurs, it's not common, but it's not rare either. It's in between. So piston driven systems. Oops, I forgot the piston. Now, you will have some separation and pressure from high side to low side because the actual inlet tube and capillary tubes going to the evaporator, they will cause a pressure drop. But the pressure drop will not be nearly the same as it would if there was a metering device in place. Now, let's say with a metering device, you had a compression ratio of two, two and a half to one. Let's say for 410A, that means 250 PSI to 100 PSI. Now that's a little bit low probably for most situations, but you get the picture, two and a half to one. Whereas if you lose a piston and you try to run pressure through there, trying to pump refrigerant into the evaporator coil, maybe it would be 175 to 145. Something a lot closer, probably not equal, because just the fact that it's pumping through any pipe means there's gonna be resistance. There'll be a difference in pressure. I mean, there's a drop in pressure from one end of a line to the other. It's just not significant, unless you have a long, long line set, which you have to compensate for by doing other things, which we can talk about too. I think I've talked about that in the past. You know, there's not a lot of new stuff in HVAC, so there'll be some repetition in the videos. <laughs> uh, so people leave out pistons all the time. It could be a mistake like, oh, this is the wrong piston. I gotta switch it with the one at the condenser. I gotta read the manual, because a lot of times you gotta change pistons in the air handler based on what the manual says about the matchup. That same token, there's pistons in outdoor units too. Same thing can happen there. If you don't put the piston in, or a lot of times you'll have like a carrier product where if you take, take apart the outdoor service valve, you have a piston right there. And if you take it out, let's say you're brazing it together, then you're going to tie it back in and put the piston back in. Maybe you forgot to put the piston back in. All of a sudden it's heating inefficiently. Now you'll still have some heating, but it won't be anything like it should be because you have to create that pressure difference. You had to build up that compression and that heat to get the heat in the heat pump. Heat pump is already lower than the gas furnace. If you lower that further, you're gonna have all the northern transplants yelling at you over the phone because they're already angry that their air is only 95 degrees instead of the customary 120. You don't wanna make them more angry. You see how they act. I'm just kidding, it's southern hospitality. I'm just kidding, I'm joking. I love our northern transplants. I just talked to one the other day. Like, hey, dude, hey, oh, I don't know. I don't even know what he's saying. Forget about it. Something we recently talked about is reversing valves. Reversing valves that get stuck midway, it happens. About 15 years ago, it happened a lot. It can be epidemic like it was then or just sporadic. Reversing valves get stuck. Now, if you have a reversing valve that's stuck and you want to separate it from the compressor, you can do some manual tapping. If you can tap the reversing valve, sometimes it'll free up and you'll say, okay, well, it's just a uh, reversing valve one the compressor because it's really hard to tell sometimes you can try to map out the heat where the heat is going but it's not always that easy because the compressor is going to work less if it's being cycled through the reversing valve too it's not just the compressor being inefficient if you present less work for the compressor to do it'll run at a lower amperage it's a tough one tap it out try to tap it so that's just a few situations that are system related, but there is a technician one and I did it myself. I just started up a system. It was cold outside, but I had to start in an AC so I could check it out. So I started it up and I'll be daggone, it's a 410A unit and it was running 180 and 180. What's going on? I just worked all day. This is the single man company I am. 
I spent all day by myself working on this thing. There wasn't anyone else there. It sucked a lot. It was at the beach. Couldn't go to the beach. What happened was I left my gauges open. It was cycling through my gauges. Now, if you're bleeding out your gauges, sometimes you're not paying attention. You have that center gauge. You, you're, you're bleeding stuff through. It took me like five minutes to figure this out. I was like, what's going on? I was looking all around trying to theorize. It was me. It was just me being stupid. And it could happen to anybody out there. No one is too smart to do something extremely dumb, especially after working all day by yourself and lifting units by yourself and stuff and having the homeowner go, a little bit of oil came off the air handler. We're going to reduce your pay by $50. That happened on the same job. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this talk. We'll have some more coming up soon, and I'll catch you on the next one. God bless each and every one of you. Save 8% off your order at truetechtools.com by using the Shop Talk discount code.